Hi, so this is going to be next question. So it says that a perpetuity immediate pays 100 per year and that immediately after the fifth payment, uh, the perpetuity is exchanged for a 25 year annuity immediate uh, that will pay X at the end of the first year. Okay, so 25 years more. Thirty, so twenty-five years more, and payments of X will start for here. Each subsequent annual payment will be eight percent greater than the preceding payment. The annual effective rate of interest is eight percent. Okay, well, the first thing that I would do here is that I would uh, see that we would have to make. Uh, some sort of equations that will equal to each other. So this timeline it consists of two different parts. The first of which is that uh, from time zero to five, there is a perpetuity immediate occurring at 100 per year over I. So this is the equation for the first part of V. Now, the second part is that we need to find out that since there's a payment of X uh, starting at time six, we see that subsequent annual payments will be 8% greater than the first, right? So we're going to have to um, acknowledge that at time seven, it would be X times 1.08 greater. We also acknowledge that at time A, it would be uh, X uh, 1.08 uh, squared all the way until time 30 when it becomes X 1.08. What is the exponent here? Well, we see that um, since one is the exponent here and two is the exponent here. We see that there's always a six, uh, six interval time, or uh, six interval difference between the exponent and where the time is at. So seven minus one is six, eight minus two is also six, which means that we would have to do 30 minus six, which is uh, 24, right? So we start to see like a geometric uh, progression after a while since we see the exponents accumulating. We also see that uh, for, we also have to refer these payments to a comparison date. So I'm gonna make the comparison date uh, at time five. So that would mean that we would also have to discount each payment. So uh, the payment at uh, six would be X times V this would be uh, discounted V squared. This would be discounted V cubed. And then this, this one will be discounted uh, V25. Now we're gonna have to form an equation to find the present value of it. So we're gonna use the geometric series formula to figure it out. So we're gonna use the first term minus of uh, first omitted term over one minus common ratio. So we're gonna take the first term, which is uh, XV, or since we know that payments of X occur at each interval, we could just uh, sub take X out. We're going to start from here. The first term is V. We also need to find the first omitted term. So what would occur at the first omitted term at time 31? Hmm. Well, we'll see that both of these exponents are going to increase by one. So the first omitted term is 1.08 to the 25 times v to the 26 over one minus a common ratio. So we'll have to find the common ratio. We'll see, we see that if I were to put this on top of this, the common ratio would be 
to the B times B. Now we have our whole equation set up. So now we have to find X. Well, it says that the annual effective interest is at 8%. So we're going to have to plug that one in. So we're going to do 100 divided by 0 0.08. And we find out that the answer is 1250. For here, we see that uh, x times effective of v, so we would do uh, 1.08 to the negative 1 power. And we find that it is 0.925529926 minus uh, 1.08 to the 25 times 1.08 to the negative 26, which is 0.925529259. So now we're starting to see something really funny here because both of these values are the same, so it would equal zero. Another thing is that if I were to do 1 minus 1.08 V, then it would also equal zero. Then this equation would be unsolvable. So we have to uh, do a little bit more um, analytical work. And we see that uh, after every time that we uh, discount, uh, v squared, for example, if I were to do for this one, it would actually, if I were to expand it, it would be x over 1.08. The second one at time z would be x uh, 1.08 over 1.08 squared. If I were to simplify this, it would still be x over 1.08. And this will continue on indefinitely until uh, time 30. So now uh, our new equation would actually consist of 1250 equals uh, how many uh, time periods are there? 25, so 25 payments. So we would do 25 times x over 1.08 actually. Now we just solve for x. Uh, 25 divided by 1.08, which is 23.14 divided by 23.14, and then we'll get 54.01, uh, which is the final answer. So usually when we have problems like these, we have to make sure to discount uh, b. But most likely, we also would want to write it in an expanded form to see if this type of case ever shows up again. So we don't have to waste any more time to find out that when we actually solve it, the equation doesn't work because all numerator and denominator turns out to zero, which wouldn't even make sense because uh, this uh, question deals with the concept of accumulation. So why wouldn't we uh, be able to solve for x? And why would this geometric series become zero? Then we can't use it because um, each of these actually provide a common ratio of x over 1.08 throughout. So we just take this, multiply by 25, set it to the other part of the equation, whilst also taking t equals 5 as the comparison. Thing.